Hey guys, welcome to VFX vlog number four, where I will try to answer some visual effects and filmmaking questions. One of the most fundamental questions I get asked is, where do I start? What software do I use? Where do I go? Where do I learn all this stuff? Personally, I'm entirely self-taught. What little I know, I've got from online resources, from reading books, trying it out, and just learning by doing. Now, there are a lot of great YouTube channels out there. There's a lot of great websites out there. There's a lot of great free online resources that you can use to build up your skills, and I'm going to show you where to find them. Obviously, it would be pretty stupid of me if I didn't first pimp out my own YouTube channel. So if you want to learn After Effects, I have a whole bunch of tutorials on my YouTube channel. If you go youtube.com slash surface studio, I've got all the tutorials on my channel categorized by difficulty level. Now, what you want to do if you're just getting started, scroll about halfway down the page and there's a tab called After Effects Tutorials Beginner. This is where I recommend you start if you've never opened After Effects before or you're just getting started doing your own films and your own visual effects. Once you're done with those ones, move on to the intermediate ones. And once you're done with those ones, you can move on to the advanced tutorials, which include 3D integration and just a lot more complicated effects. Obviously, there's other YouTube channels that I recommend. One of them is Final Cut King. Um, Zach King, obviously, Final Cut King means he's using Final Cut Pro on macOS. But interestingly enough, it's not actually that important which piece of software you use. So sometimes a tutorial for Final Cut may be applicable to Sony Vegas or After Effects or Premiere. As long as your software supports the basic building blocks they use to build the effect, you can do it in your own software. Now, Zach King has a whole bunch of visual effects short films as well, similar to what Freddy W does, but he does have a whole bunch of tutorials as well. Um, they're sometimes a little bit hidden, but just browse through the channel. There's plenty of good stuff here. The other one I recommend is VFX Pro, similar to Final Cut King, and I think these two are actually really good friends. Um, he's got a whole bunch of short films, quite cute ones actually, the Pikachu one's pretty cool, um, but a whole bunch of After Effects tutorials as well, like, like object tracking for 3D muzzle flashes and a whole bunch of other cool tutorials. Now, outside of YouTube, the best resource I can recommend is Video Copilot. Video Copilot is really, really high quality, fun and entertaining tutorials, and it is probably the main resource I use to learn After Effects. Andrew Kramer is absolutely hilarious. They're great tutorials, they're fun to watch. They are, however, on the difficult side of things. So unless you're very persistent in kind of sticking to it and trying it out and making sure you understand everything that is going on, some of these tutorials might be a little bit too complicated, but have a look through, just see what you can do with After Effects, get inspired and get started learning the tools. Finally, another resource I fairly recently discovered is Grayscale Gorilla. Grayscale Gorilla is actually more training for 3D and Cinema 4D, but they also have a tutorial section. And if you hop over there, you'll see that besides Cinema 4D, they also have After Effects tutorials. These ones are quite cool. So there's like 3D tracking with um, the Cineware plugin and After Effects CC. There's a whole bunch of other composition tutorials and details and particles and lighting. So this one's worth checking out as well. And those should be plenty of resources to get you started. Make sure that you get in at the level that you're at. If you're just getting started, don't dive into the advanced tutorials. You're gonna get frustrated because the learning curve, especially for After Effects, is pretty steep. Um, jump in at your level, have some fun and try them out. Most of the things you learn is simply by trying to recreate the effects for your own video projects. And to me, that's also the most fun part. So get cracking. Now, a quick word on which tool to use for which job. A lot of people get confused between Premiere and After Effects or between Final Cut and Motion. Premiere and Final Cut, while you can do some special effects, are more meant for editing your final projects together for all the cutting and slicing and going through your source files and building up your project. Specialized tools like After Effects and Motion are then meant to take small clips and add visual effects on top. That's why After Effects is also not very good at working with audio because it's not really meant to. It's meant to take a small clip, add visual effects to it, and then link it back to your Premiere project or export it and use it somewhere else. And you do exactly the same thing with Final Cut and Motion, except that I believe Final Cut does have a bit more visual effects capabilities than Premiere does. So a lot of people just, you know, just use Final Cut for everything. Finally, I'm going to address an issue that I know a lot of you guys have been getting with creating masks in After Effects. And for that, I'm going to jump into After Effects and show you exactly what you need to do. I know a lot of people are having issues creating masks and it's actually really simple. For example, I have a clip here of me just talking to a rubber duck as I do on my days off. 
Um, let's say I want to create a mask around the rubber duck. So I'm going to go over here, select my pen tool, and I'm now going to start creating a mask around the rubber duck. This doesn't look like a mask, and no, it's not a mask. What we've done is we created a shape layer. Why is that? The reason is that I didn't have my layer selected. If I don't have this layer selected, so if I unselect it and draw a mask, I will create a new layer. I'll create a shape layer, which I can then animate or do other things with. But in order to create the mask, I have to have my layer selected. So now let's do exactly the same thing. And voila, it becomes a mask. So really, really important when you're creating a mask to have your layer selected. Now, the second issue that you can get is I have my layer selected, but let's move the timeline indicator to a time when the layer is not active. So you can see the layer is not actually visible here. But now again, try to create a mask. It will create a shape layer because there is no visible layer to apply the mask to. So always remember, if you want to create a mask, make sure you're over your visible footage and make sure the layer is selected. And then you can use the masking tools to actually create a mask. And that's it for this VFX vlog. I really hope you found it helpful. As always, if you still have any comments, questions, or if you have any suggestions, leave them down in the section below. If you want to get more cool tips and tricks, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, favorite it, share the video around. It's greatly appreciated. I hope I see you in the next VFX vlog. Until next time, I will see you later.